Yeah, 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 yeah. Making her way to the mic. They start dimming the lights. You start feeling alright. From Birmingham, home of the Teddy Longs and the Ruben Studders. More once you discover. For all of the lovers, Whitney Houston and Roman Reigns. For all of the lovers, and Mickey James and Marvin Gaye. For all of the lovers, and Sasha Banks, Janelle Monet, Silk, Sonic, and Paige. Allow me to say. Look, I just found a place, sweet escape For every one of us I was kinda late Cause I just made it off the struggle bus Walking by the fate Cause I know it's right in front of us Yo, I ain't with the hate Gotta focus on what's great Ladies and gentlemen Steph Hardy is on the air Had to drop a couple bars Just to make you all aware So, sit back, relax, enjoy the show You know I go by Joe or the rest of the show Welcome, welcome, welcome to a new episode of the Hardy Wrestling Podcast with your girl, Stephanie Hardy. I, of course, am the creator and the host of this amazing platform media thing created by a black woman, a southern black woman at that. I am also a writer for Daily DDT as well as color commentator featured on the Belladonna Division, Battle Club Pro, Black Girl Magic 2022, and Spartan Wrestling. And I am so happy to be before you on this Saturday evening. Of course, wherever you're watching, whether it be on Facebook, on Twitter slash X, on Instagram, um, and also just anywhere else on YouTube if you're watching anywhere live. Or if you're going to listen to this later, thank you so, so much for the support and for the love. There has been so much going on in wrestling and also in my own life when it comes to the podcast um, that has just been going on that I almost haven't been able to even catch up with it. But of course, I'm here now and I'm so happy to see you guys and hear from you guys. Of course, Eric saying, hey, well, it's not ladies this time. It's me. Um, me and Katrina will be going live this Wednesday for Steph and Cat Talk Wow. But thank you for pulling up in the comments. And of course, Rikarsha, hey, thank you so much for watching. It was so fantastic to meet you this past weekend. And I will talk about that a little bit later on in the show. But there's just been so much going on in wrestling. And I do want to be kind enough to give a trigger warning um, for this episode because in news and gossipish, I will be discussing a very sensitive topic that's rocked the wrestling world um, for the past two months. Um, and even in the last few years, I'm going to be talking about that. So I just want to be kind enough to give a trigger warning. Um, when I do get to that part, you have every right to tune out or to put it on mute or something. If I'm talking about it and it makes you uncomfortable or feel some type of way, you have every right to do it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to do that at first before we get fully started into news and gossipish. There's just been so much happening in the midst of the road to WrestleMania, the road to AEW Revolution, so many things happening in the world of wrestling, along with it being Black History Month in the midst of it too. Like, it's just a whole lot going on. So, of course, this is where we start news and gossipish, where I talk about the latest and the greatest in um, wrestling news and social media rumors and all of the above. So, of course, I want to send a congratulations to Queen Aminata, who was officially announced this week as being signed to AEW All Elite Wrestling. Um, she's someone who you've probably noticed has been on TV in the past couple of weeks, um, going up against Deanna Parazzo, going up against Tony Storm, and a lot of amazing talent. And she even defeated Anna Jay on the most recent episode of AEW Rampage. She is a Officially signed to AEW and on Twitter she mentioned that she is the first African-born female wrestler to ever be officially signed to a major wrestling promotion so I just wanted to send a congratulations to her for that um, in the midst of highlighting so many amazing women who have made 
history in terms of black um black history um and celebrating them this month it's really great to see black women succeeding in this type of way and actually getting put on to these amazing programs and she's also in the ring of honor tournament for the women's television title and she did win her first match in that so i just wanted to send the congratulations to her because i have been watching her on um come through on social media and also in the independence for a number of years now and i think this is really good for her and they even gave her a special um interview segment with renee young as well so i'm really happy that she was able to do this so congratulations to queen aminata for being signed to aew and i also want to send a congratulations to bounty hunter um brian keith who is also um signed to aew too he's someone who's been blazing an absolute amazing Amazing trail in the independence as well with a very unique character um, and so I just feel like it's amazing that both of these amazingly talented people have been signed to AEW and now we'll see them you know go towards the next steps towards being major stars in this area so congratulations to both Brian Keith and Queen Aminata for being signed here and we definitely wish them the absolute best in their careers like you love to see it. And for this to be happening during Black History Month is just amazing. So big ups to them and to anyone else making their dreams come true out here in wrestling. It's great. Also in news and gossipish, we have Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Um, this magazine is really special to me um, because of the fact that once I got into it, like it was because um, when I was at um, a former publication by the name of Women's Wrestling Talk, um, we would have on um, a contributor by the name of Kristen Ashley, and she would talk a whole lot about her work with um, Pro Wrestling Illustrated as a writer. And big ups to her. She's doing amazing work when it comes to women's wrestling and releasing statistics of how women's wrestling performs on television. So please follow her if you already haven't. Um, I got into Pro Wrestling Illustrated due to their yearly women's um, 100, which then turned into 150 and now 250. And ever since then, you know, they just put out really great content and I love magazines, especially physical magazines. So I just wanted to give a spotlight and a shout out to them for creating these two amazing covers. Um, one is definitely their third annual, of course, spotlight on Japan. Now, this is where they, of course, highlight um, where Japanese wrestling is going at this um, rate because a lot of people are, you know, free agents and trying to work out where they're going to go next. Um, of course, Okada, who was one of the biggest stars in um, Japan, he might be going to AEW. Julia is rumored to be going to WWE. And there's just so much other stuff going on with Japanese wrestling that deserves a, a highlight and a spotlight because in these last few years, um, you've had so many stars go to Japan in order to, you know, put an ev like in order to expose themselves to an even greater audience. So they have a cover highlighting um, spotlight, putting a spotlight on Japan. But then on their UK cover, they have the TNA Knockouts champion, Jordan Grace. And it's so beautiful because it matches her outfit. And of course, she is having a really great moment because she has won the Knockouts title so many times, as well as more recently being featured in the Royal Rumble, feeding into that relationship that TNA could be having with WWE, you know, even though stuff has changed now. Um, it's amazing to see her have this moment. And considering I was lucky enough to commentate for her um, at the Belladonna division and meet her, she was really nice and just very easy to work with and stuff. Um, it's just really great to see her have this moment where all these eyes are on her at this point and on the TNA product and i feel like their tna's crown jewel is their knockouts division it always has been and it always will be so i definitely recommend that you check tna out on thursdays and watch their women's division because they do some really amazing things down there so of course the the jordan grace cover is available in the uk but you can also order it off of pwi.com um and of course you can get the spotlight on japan version that's the u.s cover um and you can buy that online as well as in stores once it comes out but this was really nice i really love all of their covers their covers are really beautiful to me um they're easy to put on a poster like 
if you want anything put up that's wrestling related on your wall, you could probably put those up and it would just look absolutely good. I'm also honored to have had um, two different Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazines on my fan tables that I have at Comic-Cons. So it's just really nice eye-catching stuff. So please be on the lookout for those and congratulations to the cover stars. Um, but definitely congratulations to Jordan Grace because that's my girl and I just want her to continue to succeed. So <laughs> it feels like Every other day, we are talking about The Rock and his place in WrestleMania Extra Large, a.k.a. WrestleMania 40. And there have just been so many rumors talking about what his place is going to be, what plans did he have before Cody Rhodes may have changed his mind and said he wanted to face Roman Reigns. Like, what is going on here? What's the aftermath of the slap and all of the things? So one of the rumors that came out out about The Rock's place in WrestleMania was the fact that The Rock may have pitched a tag team match for WrestleMania 40. Now, according to Dave Meltzer um, of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, The Rock may have pitched an idea of a tag team match pitting himself and Roman versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins of night one of WrestleMania. And it's really insane how this happened because, of course, um, at the SmackDown that happened in Birmingham, um, which I attended, Cody Rose gave off the impression that he was going to face off against Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship, but saying that he might not do it at WrestleMania, which left us all in a kerfuffle. And then he talked about how he had been gaining counsel from The Rock, and then The Rock and Roman had their little thing with the Bloodline Tree at the press event in Las Vegas and gave off the impression that this is the match that we're going to get. Um, in the main event of maybe night two of WrestleMania and that we need to just be okay with it and just get over it. Um, and then he went on to call people Cody crybabies because of the hashtag we want Cody stuff. Now, I did say on the last episode of HWP that there were a lot of fans who did take that too far in terms of throwing death threats at Ava um, from NXT, who is also The Rock's daughter, and just doing so many other things that just feeds into the toxic nature of the wrestling community. And that is absolutely valid for him to be frustrated with that. But the genesis of it comes from the fact that we want that a lot of the fan base wants to see Cody Rhodes have his moment in the sun after losing to Roman Reigns at last year's WrestleMania. Um, especially since it ended with solo cheating for Roman. So we wanted to see him finish his story by working and we saw him work hard and win the Royal Rumble again. So we want to see him beat Roman Reigns at the grandest stage of them all. But it seems like the Rock's character at this point is just like, no, nah, y'all going to get this and y'all need to be okay with it. But at this point, it's just kind of like at a standstill. We don't know exactly what we're getting. So it's just really crazy, but Cody Rhodes went on to say that he is going to double down and face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, whereas um, Roman said that he wanted to face The Rock because that's the biggest match ever, and also probably because he thinks he can just go ahead and win that match and just get it out of the way, but, you know, that's another subject. Also, Dave Meltzer said that it was the head of creative Triple H's idea to have Rhodes essentially endorse The Rock in an effort to avoid fan backlash, but it didn't work because of the hashtag we want Cody trending for multiple days afterward. So all of this has just been really insane. And then it gets even crazier when you think about how SmackDown went last night. And I will get into that a little bit later. But yeah, a lot of people just really feel like The Rock's place in this WrestleMania is probably wholly unnecessary which I can totally get, but at the same time, The Rock is The Rock, and he is bringing eyes to the product that hadn't probably watched wrestling in a very long time. So we do have to give him props for that, and maybe even if they don't have this tag team match um, at night one of WrestleMania, that might mean that someone else might be in the main event of, the, of night one of WrestleMania. Um, but I will say this. With The Rock's presence being here and his light shining so brightly, it can be argued among certain fan bases in wrestling that this is 
tying into another underlying issue that's been happening in the past few WrestleManias, and that's, of course, dealing with the women main eventing. So when it comes to um, a women's main event that could very well take place, you have EO Sky, who will be defending her WWE Women's Championship against her former friend and damage control sister, Bayley. And Bayley, of course, won the Royal Rumble for the women, which basically means that you get the opportunity to face any champion of your choosing in the main event of WrestleMania. They put their emphasis on that, but yet somehow when it comes to the women in the, in like the past few years, they sort of move them to the middle to put a man's match at the end of night one or night two. And it's just kind of like, yo, what the heck is going on? As it stands now, the only two women's matches that have main evented a WrestleMania has been Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey in the winner take all match. And um, Bianca Belair versus Mercedes Monet slash Sasha Banks um, in the first ever all black woman main event in 2021. And since then, there haven't been any others. And it could be argued that Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair could have main event at night one last year because that match was fan freaking tastic. But the bloodline storyline sort of took over all of that and they put the Usos versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in the main event of night one last year instead. And a lot of people who are fans of women's wrestling and want, you know, equality across the board when it comes to women feel like Bailey and EO's story, you know, has been very layered and it's made a whole lot of sense over the past couple of months. And they feel like that deserves a main event spot in night one and not just another um, men's match. And that is a really valid argument to make, but it can definitely be argued that the rocks um, spotlight could very well be taking that opportunity away from anybody, but then definitely away from the women for night one. So we don't know exactly what the order of the card is going to be at this point because it is still February and WrestleMania isn't until April, but we just have to wait and see. But I do um, feel that Bailey and EO's story is really good and it's very layered and we watched it unfold over the last few months as, you know, Bailey still tried to work together with a, you know, new damage control outside of her EO and Dakota you know now it's Asuka and Kyrie, but yet somehow they found a way to alienate her and make her feel like she was the odd woman out in a group that she created so we just have to wait and see how that's going to turn out but I would love for EO and Bailey to main event night one that would personally make me happy because that would give Bailey an opportunity to let her light shine and then main event WrestleMania like she's always probably wanted to do because there have been other women who have and she definitely deserves to have that opportunity as a four horse woman who sometimes get gets overlooked a lot of the time especially even now as they advertise WrestleMania and she isn't on any of the flyers though she won the Royal Rumble um yeah it's just not making any sense and they do need to honor her and give her the things that she deserves for being a pillar of women's wrestling for so very long um in wwe like she definitely deserves it but we just have to wait and see how that's gonna go but yeah like there's a lot of arguments that could be made about you know the rock's place or women's place and all of the above when it comes to wrestlemania but we just have to see how everything is gonna unfold also in news and gossipish, you had Grayson Waller sort of put his two cents in about how he feels <laughs> about fans not liking the idea of um, the Rock and Roman Reigns happening, possibly happening at WrestleMania 40. Um, he basically came out in an interview with Kenny McIntosh of Inside the Ropes and said, I have never in my life seen so many people who can barely read and write caring about a story. It absolutely boggles my mind. A few months ago, everyone was saying, oh, Rock, come back. How long have they wanted The Rock versus Roman Reigns? People have been begging for it for years. And then they get it and now they're complaining about it. It just shows in a way how stupid these fans are. They want this, but then they say, we don't want it now, we want it here. It's like, just shut up. I was backstage for that. Maybe I don't like The Rock, maybe I do, who knows? But the energy in that arena that night was wild. As I stood there with Austin Theory, 
um, who has stood across from The Rock. Um, and that's just a different vibe to it. So you have these people who are chronically online who don't know what things actually feel like because they don't leave their house. Go to the arena, feel the energy in the arena that night, and then come and talk to me. Now, of course, he was talking about um, when The Rock surprised everyone two weeks ago here again in Birmingham, which I was there for. And yes, we were screaming our faces off because we were surprised that The Rock was there. Um, it was just a whole huge surprise to us because like I mentioned before in my past episode, nobody was expecting him to be there. You know, we thought, well, it would be cool if he showed up, but then if he didn't, that's fine. But the fact that he did show up was really amazing. And yes, we did love it. But here's the thing. Us as fans don't want Cody Rhodes to be overlooked just because we're getting a main event that we've always wanted. Now, The Rock versus Roman Reigns is a marquee match anywhere, any year, regardless of when it happens. That is 100% real, okay? I'm not even saying that's not real because, like I said before, I have wanted that match for a long period of time. In fact, that's the reason why I went to California last year because I thought for sure it was going to happen there. It didn't, but it's okay. But when you look at the story of Cody Rhodes and him fighting his way back to the top of the ladder so he can get this chance against Roman Reigns to win the title that his dad never officially won, we've watched that coalesce and pop up in front of us and we just don't want that overlooked just because we're getting another match that we might want down the line so Grayson Waller though I understand he was probably in character while he was saying this in this interview you know it's not that a lot of us fans are chronically online there are some of us who are but at the same time we also watch the product and because we love the product so much we just want it to make sense we want y'all to make it make sense we don't want it to just be something that y'all just haphazardly decide and then just throw the other person away like that just doesn't make sense because we watch the product we get the easter eggs we just want it to fully make sense and give a satisfying you know conclusion that we can be okay with but you know Grayson Waller getting in in the um in the discourse is pretty interesting so you know we just gotta wait and see thank you Rakarsha for that and JD in the comments on Twitch thank you so much JD is also saying if fans invest their time they get to complain oh absolutely definitely we do get to raise our voices because we invest our time and our lives into this like being a wrestling fan is not just you know something you just watch on tv it's a lifestyle so since it's a lifestyle we get to raise our voices about it you don't get to tell us to just shut up and watch tv no that's not something that's just gonna happen here so yeah big ups to grace of waller though for getting in on the action and of course um i believe cody rhodes and seth rollins are gonna be on the grace and waller effect next weekend so that's gonna be interesting i don't know if i'm gonna wake up saturday morning to watch elimination chamber but i feel like i just might Simply because I just don't want to be spoiled, but we just got to wait and see. So big ups to him for that. Also in the news, we have um, more rumors about Drew McIntyre's contract status. Now, a lot of people have been freaking out about what could happen with Drew McIntyre since he has not fully been in a world title picture in a long period of time. And the last time he was in a world title picture, he lost to Seth Rollins, who has a vice grip on the world heavyweight championship as of right now. And now because of that, he has turned heel and now he's taking full credit for injuring CM Punk and ruining his run towards being a WrestleMania main eventer because we were definitely here for CM Punk versus Seth Rollins. We were here for it. And it looks like WWE was there for it too. But injuries happen. Humans are humans. And CM Punk has to go heal. Um, I mean heal as in like heal his body. Not heal as in turn. I'm sorry guys. Um, but Drew McIntyre has turned heel. And now he's become a bad guy. And now he's taking full credit for taking CM Punk out of the game at the Royal Rumble. Even creating a t-shirt that says CM Punk's WrestleMania um, main event. You know 2023 to 2024. It's so sad. And very savage. But I will say that Drew McIntyre in this heel run is just really... It's really insane when you think about it. But yeah, all of this comes from all of his frustrations. But when it comes to his contract status, according to Dave Meltzer, um, 
Drew McIntyre will probably re-sign with WWE, but nothing is official yet. And Meltzer added that McIntyre is really excited about the direction of his character. And Mike Johnson from PW Insider reported that McIntyre is being advertised for a WWE event in Italy in May, despite the fact that his contract is expected to end shortly after WrestleMania in April. And then in another update from Fightful Select, they reported that WWE added injury time missed to McIntyre's contract, which takes it beyond the original end date. So there seems to be a lot of stuff going on, um, a lot of different things that people are hearing about Drew McIntyre's contract status, um, because a lot of people really feel like since he's not being labeled as the top guy right now, then they're running with the narrative of him being unhappy with where he is. And then for all we know, he could very well leave and go elsewhere. He could go to TNA. He could, you know, go to AEW or just anywhere else. But with where his um, character is going, even though he does not have the title, he is still very much relevant um, because he's getting in the face of Judgment Day. He's getting in the face of Sami Zayn. And then, of course, he's doing all this as side quest because we know that once CM Punk heals up and comes back, that's going to be a big match right there because he has to get his lick back against Drew. So to me, Drew is in an okay place. And just because you don't have the title or you don't have, you know, a championship um, feud going on does not mean that your value is any less. So Drew McIntyre, you know, should be fine. But if he does decide to leave, you know, I mean, that's fine too, because ultimately, you know, he has to make that decision for himself. Because, of course, he is a main event talent. You know, he is definitely like a heavyweight guy um, in the traditional sense. And he, you know, went through a whole recreation to put himself on top. The only difference is when he was on top, it was during a pandemic, which was a very bad time, you know, to be a wrestling fan because we weren't together um, physically. But at the same time, it still counts. And I really wish that him as a character would understand that him as a champion during pandemic time still very much counted because it was during a rough time and he gave us an escape with that but you know he he's just going down this bad road so this is where we're at um but here's hoping that drew ultimately does what he wants to for himself because that's all that matters also in the news we had jade cargill in a kerfuffle on social media and um <laughs> dirt sheets somebody some dirt she decided to report that she was no longer scheduled to be on elimination chamber now i did not know that she was that she could have been a part of the elimination chamber plans um but somehow or another something was leaked and there was information giving off the impression that she could be the last woman in the elimination chamber match but as it turns out this was incorrect um it was crazy. There was so much speculation about it. But Jade Cargill decided um, to go on Twitter and post the picture of her in AEW giving a middle finger to the beer break sign that some horrid fan decided to put on to, to put on television. And it sounds like that was her response to that rumor. Because honestly, WWE has said multiple times that when Jade Cargill is fully ready to be in the ring, she will be in the ring and it's when she is ready. And the fact that she did make such a huge splash at the Royal Rumble, you know, and doing and also continuing to make splashes on SmackDown as she makes appearances there, you know, it just says a lot about who she is in terms of star power and aura. So maybe we shouldn't just be so worried about her to the point to where we're making up headlines and just putting it out there to just make it seem like, oh, well, she's in danger and they're not interested in her anymore. So they're going to take her out. No. Don't just say stuff just because you feel like it's going to get attention. Like, baby, like, back it up with credible stuff or don't say anything at all. So whether Jade's in Elimination Chamber or not, no one fully knows. But if she is, that's great. If she's not, that's great, too, because either way, whenever she decides to be put in something or they decide, you know, something is right for her and she decides it's right for her, it's going to be all right and it's going to be cool and we're going to love it either way because she's Jade. Okay. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> so Seth freaking Rollins, the world heavyweight champion, 
decided um, to mention in an interview how open he would be if Taylor Swift and the Kelsey brothers came to WrestleMania. So he had an interview with Sports Illustrated and he invited Taylor Swift and of course her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, and his brother, Jason Kelsey, to WrestleMania. He said, I would extend an invitation to both um, George Kittle, who plays for the 49ers, um, and um, Travis Kelsey. And then he said, we're in Philly, so his brother Jason Kelsey is there. We can have both of the Kelseys there. Why not? Let's have a party. Bring your girl. Bring all the Swifties. Let's go. I love everybody. Let's party. George, he's coming to WrestleMania anyway. He was at WrestleMania last year. He comes to all the WrestleManias. I'd love to have the Kelseys there, all of them, and bring the whole crew. Now, of course, um, this is very newsworthy because the Super Bowl was this past weekend. And, of course, um, the Kansas City Chiefs won um, the Super Bowl again against the 49ers, who made a good run for it in the first half. But then in the second half, they started to get on the struggle bus. And then it went into overtime, and then they didn't really recover, and the Chiefs won again. And I understand that people have been irritated, or football fans have been irritated, at the presence of Taylor Swift there, but you also can't deny that Taylor Swift's presence brings a whole nother audience to football who probably never paid attention to football in the first place anyway. So if Taylor Swift is at a WrestleMania, that would be funny. That would just be really funny to see her there. But if she's there, then that's cool. If the Kelsey's are there, you know, that would be cool too. But either way, I mean, that would be amazing. But if George Kittle is there along with the Kelsey brothers, then I suggest that George Kittle gets him a tag team partner and then they can have like a celebrity match and call it like a Super Bowl match or something. That would be funny. But either way, Seth Rollins says, you know, open up the doors to everybody to come to WrestleMania if they want to. So, hey, whatever. However, I think WrestleMania this year is going to be fun. It's going to be amazing because it's the 40th one. It's the 40th one. And because of that, it's going to be bigger glossier and shinier than the last one and it's going to be overwhelming and amazing and crazy so yeah and if celebrities of course want to come they can do that because celebrities have been coming to wrestlemania forever so yeah that's cool charlotte flair was also in the news this week as she is recovering of course from her knee injury she was also on the news um she was on CNBC talking about um, stocks and bonds or being a stock draft um, champion. And she mentioned that she's six weeks out on Thursday and she's ahead of schedule. And every day, all I can think about is returning to the ring, um, especially with all the excitement with Raw going to Netflix and WrestleMania being in Philadelphia. All I can think about is getting back and winning that, that um, number 15 championship. So a lot of people really have been missing Charlotte Flair since she's been gone and since she sustained that injury. But she keeps posting videos of her rehab status. And it just seems like with every exercise she's doing, she's getting stronger and stronger and she's powering through the pain. And for all we know, we might see her before, you know, the time limit that they gave her. They said she could be out to, for like six to nine months. Miss Ma'am could very well be back around April or May. Um, and then we just might get that dream match between her and Bianca. Who knows? Um, but either way, it was good to see that she was on CNBC, which is like finance NBC. Um, that was really cool. So I'm glad that she is still doing interviews and being out and about, um, not only with her boo thing, Andrade, but also, you know, on her own. And we can't wait to see her back. I can't wait to see her back because I just really miss her. And I really feel like this year could have been the year we got her versus Bianca at WrestleMania. But injuries happen and humans are humans and she deserves time to heal. So, yeah, I'll be happy to see her when she comes back. And we're moving more so into more tender territory with this news Maurice, who was, of course, a um, multi-time Divas champion and the wife of The Miz and mother to two amazing girls, um, revealed a diagnosis that she had um, this week. She has to undergo a hysterectomy after discovering that she had 11 precancerous tumors on her ovaries. Now, she posted about this on social media on um 
definitely on Instagram. And this really surprised me. And she um, was quoted as to saying, I have been suffering from severe abdominal distension and swelling to the point where I would look six months pregnant. A lot of GI issues, including SIBO, multiple rounds of antibiotics, extreme fatigue, and just wasn't feeling like myself. For the past year, my symptoms would come in flare ups and it progressively got worse and it became chronic. And she went to countless doctors and a lot of them would just either slap a bandaid on it or just ignore her concerns completely and just say, oh, well, it'll pass after this or pass after that. But and even told that it could have been hormonal after numerous tests, colonoscopies, endoscopies and all of the above. So finally, she got with a doctor by the name of, Th I believe, Thais Alabadi. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, she is a OBGYN um, who listened to her and pushed to find answers. And they found 11 implants coming back as borderline tumors, which is a precancer of the ovaries. And they were very sneaky and aggressive. She said, if those became cancer, the survival rate is less than a year. So she's scheduled for her hysterectomy surgery in four weeks. And of course, I won't get into the details of what that takes. Um, but she is doing okay. And she is courageous in the fight that it's going to take to, you know, rise above that. And I know that probably has to be the scariest thing on the planet to find out this issue that just keeps growing turns out to be precancerous tumors. Like, and what's even crazier about this situation is, is that you have, you go to these doctors with your problems and you tell them, you know, what's happening, but then it's just like, they kind of ignore you and don't, you know, and don't really listen to your concerns a lot of the time. And that just really, really sucks when that happens. That's happened to me before. Um, but what I will say is this, once you do find that doctor who does listen to you, um, it means a lot. And it goes to show you that there are some doctors who really do care about their patients and really do want to see their patients thrive. And honestly, I'm really happy that she found that doctor that actually took the extra mile in caring for her. So she found out what was actually wrong with her. So big prayers to Maurice and the Miz and her children and everyone else. And I hope that she does rise above this and lives a really long life past this point. And also, I just want to send an encouragement to anyone out there watching this or listening to this. Do not give up when you feel that there is something wrong and advocate for yourself and the best care at the doctor, please. Please advocate for yourself as much as you can. You are worth it. Your life depends on it. There are people in your life who also depend on it as well. So please advocate for yourself at the doctor. Look up symptoms if you have to. But please also, and also just don't give up finding a doctor that will actually listen to what you have to say. And that also goes for women too. Because folks who make this seem like women are just hysterical and just crazy when it comes to certain things. And that's not true. That's not true. When we know something's wrong, we know something's wrong. And it has nothing to do with emotion a lot of the time. It has to do with logic. So just don't give up on finding that one doctor that's going to listen to you. And just advocate for yourself. Advocate, advocate, advocate. Fight for your life, please. Maurice did it. You can do it. Advocate for yourself, please. And we're definitely praying for Maurice and her family. Yes, Rakarsha, absolutely. So lastly, in news and gossip-ish, this is where the trigger warning um, warrants right here for this story. Um, Ashley Massaro was in the news again um, in wrestling here lately because it was made public by her best friend who appeared on News Nation and had an interview that she dealt with a lot of issues during her time in WWE that was covered up by people in charge. Now, um, in the interview, her best friend um, talk, corroborated the story of Ashley saying that she had been assaulted or essayed or sexually assaulted 
by multiple by members of the United States military while on a WWE tour in the Middle East in 2006. And in the wake of her death, um, where she ended her own life, um, Ashley Massaro's lawyers released an affidavit which contained her account of the assault and WWE's response to it, which of course is all coming out now in the news and in the wake of the scandal that's going on with Vince McMahon and um, him being accused of sex trafficking with Janelle Grant. Now, in 2019, WWE officially denied any knowledge of Massaro's story, but um, John Laurinaitis, um, through his attorney, contradicted the statement but denied that there was an effort to cover it up. But Ashley's best friend said that shortly after her return to the U.S., um, the wrestler spent eight hours with her head on my lap in tears telling me what happened to her in Kuwait. And she also said that the account included being helped back to her, her a hotel room by a WWE executive after the assault and left in Kuwait for days after the, re the rest of the tour returned to America. And also, this gets worse, um, Vince had Stephanie McMahon take his place because she was a female, a woman, to make Ashley comfortable, and they just played with her. They played with her because everything Stephanie had Masaro feel comfortable and safe about as they, as soon as they walked into this boardroom meeting, Ashley was on her own completely, and she was threatened, and there was no compassion, and there was no sympathy, there was nothing. And basically... Um, when they asked her best friend if this, if these events contributed to her taking her own life, her best friend said, absolutely. Um, and it's just really sad when you go and watch the interview um, that her best friend gave. But I wanted to put this here and talk about this here because... I didn't get a chance to really talk about the scandal, you know, when everything came out via the Wall Street Journal. And I was asked about it at Comic-Con um, this past weekend, where, you know, to ask whatever people ask me, how do you feel about the Vince McMahon thing? And as a woman, especially even as a woman of color, when I heard about that lawsuit and actually read the lawsuit, It was horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Now, of course, this is all alleged, but seeing as this is going on and all of these stories are coming out, I'm inclined to believe victims more than I am the people who might have done these things, right? And my job is to protect women in wrestling, period, no matter what. So... Since all of this is alleged and all of the above, if this really happened, I hate it because women in wrestling have had to go through so much over years and decades just because we love a certain thing, because we love to either talk about wrestling, write about wrestling, or even get in the ring. We always have to deal with some men who abuse their power and abuse their money to treat us like we're toys and that we're just material items just because, you know, we have boobs or because we're hot or because of all these different things. They could just take advantage of us and treat us like trash. And there have just been so many stories of assault that we either haven't heard or who that or that are coming out about various promotions, not just WWE, um, but in other promotions as well. And it just makes no sense at all. It's almost as if men decide that, OK, well, I'm going to get into wrestling and I'm going to offer these women these opportunities, but they have to do stuff for me in order to feed a horrible part of my ego that needs to be filled. And that's just absolutely gross because women are human beings. I am a human being and every other woman, woman that participates in wrestling are human beings. We work hard. We work just as hard, if not harder than y'all. And we want opportunities that are equal to, if not larger than y'all's because we work for it. And because we are brilliant enough for them, we do not ask 
for all of these negative things to happen to us. We don't want to be victimized. We want to be heard. We want to be respected and we want to be loved for the work that we put in. And Ashley, sadly enough, will never get the flowers that she deserves for putting forth the effort that she wanted to put forth in terms of wrestling. Because I even read in the article that she wanted to get better in wrestling, but they denied her the opportunity to get better training. And they wanted her to be on TV immediately because of the popularity that she gained during the diva search. And I remember that. And the idea that she was able to do her very best on the fly, you know, is a testament to how hard she wanted to work and how she wanted to get it, you know, right. But the fact that they didn't take her seriously enough to do that, and then the fact that she was violated in that way, and you still didn't want to do anything about it because of a corporate relationship with the U.S. Army, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And also, let me just say, if you are a soldier in any branch of the military, and if you are abusing people, you need to be out of the military, period. You don't deserve to have the opportunity and to have the honor that comes with protecting the country if you are assaulting people. That is not something that you deserve to have or be a part of if you are hurting other people. And I don't care who is mad about whatever it is I have to say right now. If you're angry about it, you can unfollow me, whatever, I'll be fine. But the truth is, is that men should not be treating women in wrestling like trash. In fact, men shouldn't be treating women like trash anyway. But when it comes to this wrestling thing, when it comes to media, when it comes to production work when it comes to the athletes the referees and all of that if women are a part of your company they deserve to be respected for their talents and listened to and not gaslit to believe that the issues that are happening with them are not happening with them wrestling is nothing without its women it's nothing without the women And it also goes for fans, too. Like, women fans deserve to be respected and protected as well. Like, we shouldn't have to worry about men acting crazy. Men need to learn how to act. Like, it's not up to us to try to make men act right. It's up to men to act right for themselves. Because we are human beings. And Ashley was a human being and she didn't deserve any of that treatment. Janelle Grant didn't deserve any of that treatment. You cannot continue to take advantage of us just because you have money or because you feel like you have all of this power. No, that's not right. If you are using your power and your influence to victimize or further victimize an already victimized group, then you are definitely a part of the problem and you can go straight to hell with gasoline draws on. And I said what I said, and I meant it. Respect women in wrestling. And I hope that Ashley's family can gain peace from all of that's happened. And I hope that Ashley's soul, you know, can rest knowing that what she contributed, you know, to wrestling, you know, will be respected by those who will really respect it. And her story will actually free some people at the very least, because she deserved better than that. And that is all I have to say about that. I'm sorry I had to talk about that. But honestly, it just makes no sense at all. It is 2024. Women are not your sex objects. We're not. And that's just the truth about it. So that's the end um, of news and gossipish, and now we will move forward to what I liked in wrestling this week. So Monday Night Raw happened, and there were a few things I did like about the Monday Night Show, and something that I did notice is the fact that the Women's World Champion Rhea Ripley has been making less and less appearances with damage. I mean, not damage. I'm sorry. With judgment day as of late, like she really has not been out there with them when they're, you know, in the midst of their craziness going on with our truth and everybody else. She really has not been out there as much because of course she's had her own business to handle, which is something that I do definitely appreciate because I did kind of hate how she was always in men's business and barely in the business of herself and the women's division. So I am glad that she is getting it cracking with the women's division a whole lot more, but I did just notice like she really has been coming out there with the men that much. And I was just like, huh, 
That's interesting. So yeah, I'm just wondering if that's like a different wrinkle into things, but I just, you know, wonder how that's going to happen and how that's going to unfold, especially with WrestleMania coming up and also with um, Elimination coming up in her home continent of Australia and how she'll have to face off against Nia Jax um, for the title. Like, I really think that's going to be interesting, you know, as we're on the road to WrestleMania. But yeah, is it possible that we might see Rhea Ripley leave Judgment Day pretty soon? It's interesting. We got to see what happens there. But yeah. Another thing that I liked on Raw this week was Becky Lynch's promo talking about um, her journey in wrestling and also, you know, the things that she's had to sacrifice and miss due to her passion um, for her career in professional wrestling. And she even and it even went very heartfelt where she talked about how she missed her father's funeral because she went to a show um, and how hard that was. And also the fact that now she's even have to explain to her daughter, you know, why she looks so bruised and beat up sometimes and how hard that can be. And then she even discussed why her dad wants to fight Maui from Moana. And I thought that was really funny because her and Seth Rollins both made references <laughs> to Moana. And I'm just like, you know what? I really love the fact that y'all incorporate the idea that y'all have a daughter and talk about, you know, what it's like having a young child. And young children love Disney movies. I know that because I was a young child who loved Disney movies. So that was really funny. And just the fact that Becky, you know, was just like, let's take it, let, let's, let's make a toast to this road to WrestleMania. Because, yeah, it's getting really crazy right about now. So let's just stop for a minute and just drink to, you know, the journey of where we're going to go for this WrestleMania season. And Becky Lynch is, of course, she has her sight set on WrestleMania by winning the Elimination Chamber match for the women in Australia so she could face off against Rhea Ripley for the world women's title. And I am definitely here for it. Um, Becky versus Rhea should be an amazing match. Um, I'm definitely here for that. Um, but yeah, like <laughs> that was just a really cool segment. And she looked really cool, you know, in that segment with her. Um, yellow and black jacket looking like she just looked very hip-hop in this picture and it was cute so big ups to becky good luck to her because it's going to be crazy because elimination chamber is a crazy match but yeah another thing that i absolutely loved about monday night raw was the segment the promo segment between seth rollins and cody rose now, of course, Cody was addressing everything that happened in the press event and also everything that happened on SmackDown and what led to him making his decision to face off against Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship after, you know, kind of looking like he changed his mind or whatever. So Seth Rollins comes out here and I'm looking like, bro, what are you doing out here? So are you angry at Cody for not choosing you? What's going to happen? But Seth Rollins really surprised us here by saying, that if Cody needed protection, then there's no one more equipped to be your shield than me. And he talked about how he is a part of the reason why Roman Reigns is the way he is. Because, of course, they were in Lexington, Kentucky for this episode of Raw. And in that same arena at the Rupp Arena was where he stabbed Roman Reigns in the back by hitting him with the chair and effectively breaking up the shield with with him, Roman, and John Moxley slash Dean Ambrose. And he says, since I'm a part of the reason why the tribal chief is, then I will help you take him down. Because there's a whole bloodline on the side of Roman. There's Solo, there's Jimmy, there's Paul, and now there's The Rock. But I am more equipped to be your shield than anybody else. And when I tell you I got chills listening to this promo, I got straight chills. Because it felt like this moment, number one, it just felt like a Marvel movie. It felt like something out of a Marvel movie. Like something that Iron Man would say to Captain America. And in this case, Captain America is Cody and Seth Rollins is Tony Stark. Like it just felt Marvel-esque because when you look about the, when, and then number two, when you think about the psychology of it and the story that these men have told, like when Cody Rose returned to WWE freaking 
three years ago now. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> time is going by really fast. Um, three years ago, the first person he faced was Seth Rollins and it wasn't even for a title. They just fought each other for the sake of fighting each other. And they had a great trilogy of matches that of course ended in hell in a cell. And ever since then, and even since, you know, war games they've been working together really well so it's just really crazy to think about their journey from hating each other to now respecting each other and then protecting each other like it's almost like they've been building a brotherhood between these two and i just really loved it it just really gave marvel mcu type vibes with this promo i enjoyed it so much and i just can't wait to see you know what that means or what that will entail like how is seth gonna protect cody like because Cody is already a renegade crazy man anyway who isn't afraid of nothing or nobody imagine having Seth Rollins on your side like that's crazy stuff and I'm really excited to see how that's gonna you know manifest on this road to Wrestlemania like it's just cool and I just really loved it and then another part of Raw that I really loved was of course the six-man tag between um, the New Day and Jay Uso and Imperium. This match was fantastic. It was a great opening to Monday Night Raw, and I do suggest you go back and watch it. It was a lot of athleticism on display. And if anything, the New Day continued to show why they deserve to be relevant in conversations of being one of the best tag teams ever because of their chemistry and their pure athleticism. Now, I know, of course, we do miss Big E a whole lot, but we do definitely need to give credit for Kofi and um, Xavier continuing to wave the New Day flag and just be excellent regardless of what comes their way. Like they're just so good together. And their chemistry with Jay, who is of course one half of their greatest rivals, was just amazing. Like I love this match top to bottom and Imperium did great too. So please go and watch it. It was an amazing tag team match. And Jay Uso got the win and actually covered one of the members of Imperium, which means he might be coming for Gunter's IC Championship. And if he wins that title, I will be so excited because Jay is my boy. Like, I love Jay Uso. I always have. So if he wins his first singles title, I will be very excited about that. So a part of me did want him to go for the world heavyweight title but you know a long time ago back in the day if you won the ic title then that meant that you were next in line to possibly challenge for the heavyweight title or the wwe championship so if they do it the traditional way maybe jay could win the heavyweight title one day you never know but then again you also have jimmy who might try to ruin it for him and we might get him versus you know jay at wrestlemania that would be cool too brother versus brother but we just gotta wait and see also i love that pat mcafee is back on commentary i just love him nobody can ever make me hate him he's just incredible him and michael cole just give me life and they just deserve to be together forever and ever amen <laughs> yeah so moving into what i loved about nxt this week I love that people are giving more credit to um, JC Jane for saving Chase U and raising that money with those calendars that they were selling at Vengeance Day. And apparently, you know, they sold out really fast. They were even selling them online and stuff. So for all we know, they might restock you, you might buy them or whatever. Um, and a lot of people did, there were some people who did feel a way about the calendars being a thing in the, in the light of the whole scandal with Vince and stuff. But when you take that part away from it, you know, it was a pretty crafty way to make some money to save Chase U storyline wise. So, but I do get those concerns. But what I'm also concerned about is Adriana Rizzo's um, role in all of this. Like, why is JC possibly doing a, doing a deal with the D'Angelo family with chase you and could this put them in further danger of closing yet again like this low-key feeds into my theory of jc not being all the way a face at this point because i always felt like she was always halfway in chase you and halfway out of chase you so if she you know raises this money but yet somehow has to like give some of it back or something like that 
in order to feed the D'Angelo family and then put Chase you in danger, then that's going to really like break Thea Hale's heart. And that's going to cause them to have like a rift in their friendship. And that would be interesting to see. But then that would also make JCJ more devious and more toxic than we ever thought she could be, which low key gives her, you know, the opportunity to be more of a dastardly heel than she ever was. So, yeah, I don't know what's happening with this, but um, I am very interested to see where this story goes. So, yeah, JC, what you got cooking? We got to figure that out. Another thing I liked about NXT was the fact that I just did not know that Lyra Valkyria, the NXT Women's Champion, was so strong that she could carry Tatum Paxley out of the ring after she got beat by Lola Vice. This was so funny to me. Like, I was laughing really hard because I was just like, dang, Lyra, I did not know you were that strong. <laughs> I didn't know she was that strong enough to carry her all the way to the back the way she did. I was just like, I'm gagged. But, you know, a champion is a champion. And that was cool. And it also seems like she's warming up to Tatum Paxley. Because, of course, Tatum was running behind her, trying to save her, and Loki being obsessed with her or whatnot. But it looks like Lyra is just like, okay, well, come on. You know, since you're being there for me, I might as well be there for you. And I like that. And it's really sweet. But, yeah, I just did not know that Lyra was that strong. So, big ups to strong women in NXT. Oh, another part that I liked, um, sorry for that, but another part that I liked in NXT was just Roxanne just being crazy um, and slapping Ren Sinclair in the face for trying to be encouraging to her about the NXT women's title picture and how come she's not in it. Roxanne is very frustrated with her place in NXT at this point, and Ava is telling her, you know, in this picture, like, look, um... Shotzi got this opportunity because, you know, they had been going back and forth. She, well, Shotzi had the opportunity to face off against Lyra Valkyria next week on NXT for the women's title, but she did announce that she did sustain an injury at a live event. So sadly she won't have that match. Um, but in the moment, Roxanne was really heated about it. She was just like, bro, what did she do to deserve it? And how come I don't have it? But I really feel like the quiet part that no one is saying out loud is the fact that Roxanne has basically done it all in NXT and it might be about time for her to get called up to the main roster I feel like in the midst of everybody else getting called up to the main roster she should have been called up by now we have Braun Breaker up there we've had Carmelo Hayes making appearances we had Alba Fire and Isla Dawn even get called up so with all of these call-ups why are we still dealing with Roxanne down here move Roxanne up she has the talent, you know, clearly she has all this attitude that she wants to take out on people. Let her take it out on older, on, on like the OG people on the main roster, like trickle her into the main roster. Like you keep trickling in everybody else, trickle her in please. Because it just seems like in NXE, she's like running around a hamster wheel, repeating the same stories. So please give her an opportunity, trickle her into the main roster before you officially call her up because I feel like at this point, she's one and done in NXT. She's done. I really feel like she's done. So, yeah. Yeah. Just give Roxanne a chance. So, yeah. Now, of course, we're getting to Jada Parker. Eric Isaac in the comments saying JD, Jada Parker is a star in the making. She is. And my fun, the funniest part about this whole situation with her beef with the D'Angelo family, with OTM, is the fact that world star hip hop posted about her and said, dang, wrestling look kind of different, don't it? And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's really funny because it reminds me of the time Nikita Lyons went viral and world star was talking about her because of how beautiful she was or, or is. And now they're doing the same thing to Jada Parker. But yeah, mainstream people, Talk about these athletes. Get them on your shows because they're amazing. Not only are they amazing athletes, they're gorgeous people. So Jada Parker beat Adriana Rizzo in a match, and she did pretty okay. Um, she did really good. But, you know, there is so much more growth that needs to happen between both of these women. But they did do a good job for their first singles match against each other. 
So I can't wait to see more of what um, is going to happen with this rivalry. And I can't wait to see more of what Jada Parker has to offer because she is a star and she is a gorgeous, gorgeous girl. So I can't wait to see what happens with her. And also, I know Muscle Man Malcolm was joking on Twitter <laughs> saying that Jada Parker should be in the Hall of Fame or Jada Parker should main event WrestleMania. Let's take baby steps, okay? <laughs> baby steps, baby steps, okay? Baby steps. Also for NXT, I really love Lexis King. Now, I'm normally not a heel girl. I'm mostly a baby face girl. But when it comes to Lexis King and his heel work, I just enjoy it so very much. Like he is just so ridiculous that you almost have to like giggle and laugh to yourself because of how crazy he is. He is so cagey that he's willing to get in anybody's face, talk trash to anybody, and just do whatever he wants to do because he feels like he can. And that's just a level of delusion that just keeps me entertained no matter what. And this week, he got in the face of Oba Femi, the North American champion, and said that he wanted to challenge him. And I'm just like, you know what? Your delusion might be a bit off because Oba is not a game player. Like, he is not here to play Monopoly with us. He is not here to play Scrabble. He is here to destroy people. And he is going to destroy you, Lexus. <laughs> He's going to destroy you. Okay? Now, this might be a good match. Like, this has the potential to be a good match between, you know, these blue chippers. But at the same time, yo, Lexus, chill. <laughs> But I love his character work. He is so funny to me. Like, I, I enjoy him every time he goes on the screen. And I just love his entrance. Like, what says royalty more than rolling in on a throne? That's amazing. So, Lexus King, be yourself, and I'll enjoy it. <laughs> just continue to be yourself. Rikarsha saying Lexus is bold. Absolutely. He's definitely bold. He, it's, it's hilarious how bold he is. I love it. And then, of course, we get to Darth Mello, Carmelo Hayes. Now, I did not do an episode after his turn on Trick Williams. But the first thing that I do want to say was I was right the entire time. For those who follow me, from the time Trick Williams decided to insert himself in the NXT title picture and Carmelo was looking mad about it and he was acting like he didn't attack him, I said... He attacked him. I told y'all he did it. I told y'all. I tried to tell you. And guess what? He revealed himself as to have done it. So guess what? Here we are. And now we've got Darth Mello. So on this past episode of NXT, he fought Joe Gacy and defeated him, you know, and stuff like that. But his promo talking about why he attacked Trick the way he did was just so savage in nature that it was just like, man, it low-key makes you argue that maybe Carmelo should have just been healed his entire run instead of healed then face and heal again. Because his stuff as a heel is just so ooh, it's just all it's just it just gives you chills, like the more you think about it, or just hearing what he has to say. And he's just really savage with what he has to say as well. He said that Trick Williams was nothing more than a hype man, and that's all it is, and that's all you'll ever be. Like the savagery it was so terrible it was almost like he was saying look we came to an agreement you were only supposed to be this you weren't even supposed to be anything else you were just only supposed to be my hype man you were only supposed to go after the north american title and that was all you were supposed to do you see how sometimes people in your life who claim they love you want to just keep you at the level that they're comfortable with there is definitely a lesson that can be learned from this. Like the people in your life can sometimes just put you in a box and make it seem like, oh, you just got to stay here because that's the only place where that's the only place where I'm comfortable with handling you at. No. Why can't your friend be champion just like you? Like, why can't he go for the big things? Like, why? Like, it, it just makes no sense. But this this term. Yo, like it's crazy. And then the fact that he attacked Ilya Dragunov too. I Here's my prediction for how I think this is going to go leading into Stand and Deliver. There are two other specials that NXT has to have before Stand and Deliver. 
I ultimately feel that Carmelo Hayes is going to beat up and attack Ilya Dragunov so much so and weaken him so much so to the point to where he's going to take the NXT title from him. And then Trick Williams, in a recovered and even more locked in and focused mindset, is going to come back, beat the brakes off of Carmelo, challenge him for the NXT championship, and it is going to main event stand and deliver and it will be the first time two black men have ever made an, an event during wrestlemania weekend that's history right there and i hope to god i'm there to witness it because that's just major for these two men if that is the case that's how i feel like it's gonna go that's my prediction for how their story is gonna go I, it would be amazing if that happened but if it doesn't you know it's fine, but I really feel like that's going to happen, and it's going to be cool. Jock in the comments saying, Carmelo justified. No, he's not. He's literally not justified. He's not. He is not justified. Like, it's wrestling. Like, come on. No. You shouldn't try to keep your friends in a box. You just shouldn't. It's terrible. But I'm going to enjoy this little run that Darth Mello is going to have before he gets called up to the main roster too. And I hope he gets put on the SmackDown because if he does, we might see another feud between him and Braun and that will be fun. But we'll get to that later. Um, Rikarsh is saying that's a great idea. Thank you so much. Jock saying he whooped a trick. Oh, wow. Stop being disrespectful. Stop it. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to scold him for a minute. Um... <laughs> Um, whoa, I'm missing a picture. Um, so in the midst of everything else that I enjoyed about wrestling, I definitely am enjoying the run that Deanna Perazzo is on, on AEW. That's what, um, moving on to AEW Dynamite. I love that the women are doing more on the show. You have Deanna Perazzo, um, who moved to AEW from TNA and now she is about to face off against Timeless Tony Storm for the AEW Women's World Championship. And on this episode we had um Tony Storm have a whole little movie called Wet Ink where she was talking about how um her and um Deanna's friendship sort of led to Deanna, you know, reaching for more and just trying to like copy her and her journey or whatnot or whatever. And she wound up getting that tattoo that they had gotten together, which was kind of like a duck or something like that. She she got the tattoo like either covered up or just altered in some way, shape, or form. And it looked like there was a stick going through it, and it was really weird. But Deanna said, Fine, let me just make this clear. I am taking your title, B word. And I was like, ooh. So I really do like this. Um, I like this story that's unfolding between Tony and Deanna. And for all we know, Deanna could, you know, take the title off of her. But, you know, the way that they're bigging up Tony's character has just been really crazy as of late. So I'm not sure if she'll be dethroned as of yet. But at the same time, if she is, I wouldn't be surprised. Because the virtuosa is an amazing wrestler. So she might just submit Tony for all we know. But then again, Tony has friends, so she might cheat. You never know. But either way, I like the way that the story is coalescing. Also, another thing I didn't get to talk about when it was first announced, you have AEW Big Business about to happen. And it's going to happen, I believe, after AEW Revolution. And this is a special episode that they're having at the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts, which is highly speculated to be the night a certain Miss Ma'am Mercedes Monet might be making her AEW debut. Ooh, I'm excited because I love my GOAT. I love her so, so much, and I want to support her. You know, no matter what she does in wrestling, it's going to be iconic. I'm really excited about it, if that's the case. But then a lot of people have also speculated this could be the night Okada makes his debut. So either way, big business is going to happen all around, and there definitely has to be a reason why they announced this so far in advance. So it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out. But if Mercedes is making her debut on this show, it's going to be 
interesting and it's going to be cool and all eyes will be glued to it because she is not only a money maker she's not just a standard and a blueprint and a ceo she is a needle mover she is the goat she's the greatest women's wrestler of all time so be ready be ready <laughs> eric isaac saying we got five Count them matches on AEW TV this week. Tony and Deanna matches on Dynamite. Rosa and D Bar Collision and Jay versus May and Rampage Friday. Yeah, it's a lot of women's matches going on. Like the women's division is um making more progress. Um, in the has been making more progress in the past couple of weeks, and that is really good, and that is to be commended. And I hope it consistently stays that way. I really do, because those women are so talented, and they deserve everything you know that the men on the show get. Absolutely, so it's cool stuff. Then another thing that I like on AEW um, that I've been quietly sort of watching on the side is Ruby Soho and her love story with Cool Hand. Angelo Parker, like this love story. I live for love stories in wrestling, especially when they look cute and you can feel all the warmth and the heat from it. It's just like, oh, this is cute. And the fact that her that Soraya was trying to break them up made me so sad. I was like, girl, why don't you want to see Ruby be happy? But and then somehow another Harley Cameron got into the think the thick of things, and I'm just like, girl, why are you here? But it looks like things have worked out and Angela left her left Ruby a note saying not to trust Soraya. So now she's talking to Angelo and he asked her, you know, out on the date on Valentine's Day. And she was just like, yeah, you can take me for a drink next week. And I was just like, ah, romance in wrestling is just so cute. I haven't been this fully invested in a romance in wrestling since Mandy and Otis. <laughs> That is one of my favorite wrestling romances of all time. Like, this is cute. This is really cute. And I like it a lot. I really like it. Like, you better get her. And y'all better be romantic and cute with each other. And just keep it going. So, I really like it. So, yeah. A thing that I hate that's happening on TNA. This is Giselle Shaw. Um, for those who watch um, TNA on a more consistent basis. She won the X um, match. So now she gets the challenge for the knockouts championship anytime she wants to. And I feel like she attacked Jordan Grace after her match with Savannah Evans, who was once a part of the Shaw Taraj. And it looks like since she won this X match, like, She's just been destroying her shot to rock. She kicked out and fired Jai Vidal. She kicked out Savannah Evans. Now she's just all by herself. And it makes me sad because one of the things that got me into Giselle Shaw in the first place was her shot to rock. So I'm really sad that the shot to is no longer a thing. Like, I feel like nobody said Giselle Shaw's name quite like Jai Vidal. Like, the way he said her name, especially during Trinity's run, like, you're going to get in trouble with Giselle Shaw. Like, the way he said it with his whole mouth was just like, I love this. You're making, like, they made Giselle look like, boom. But I guess now it's time for Giselle to really be on her own now and go after, you know, some gold. And I get that because she's really good and she's also a history maker. So... If she does beat Jordan Grace, you know, in the next few weeks, that would be really cool um, for her and very history making in terms of representation for trans women in wrestling. But yeah, I just missed the Shantaraj. I will definitely miss the, the Shantaraj. So I just wanted to say that real quick. Now, this beautiful face, Zelina Vega had a match against Tiffany Stratton to qualify for the Elimination Chamber on SmackDown. Now, we're getting into what I liked in SmackDown. And 
she did so good in this match. In fact, both of them did. Tiffany and um, Zelina did an amazing job in this match. Um, like there was a lot of different moves that we hadn't really seen Zelina utilize in a long time um, here. Like she was jumping off of the top rope onto Tiffany, onto the floor and everything. Like hitting her karanas and head scissors. I was just like, yes, ma'am. Show them your full power. But Electra Lopez had to come in and ruin everything and it was just really sad and I was just like god dang it my baby when is she gonna get her chance at some gold because it's like she said in an exclusive interview online like she has not had you know a chance at gold since Rhea Ripley at Backlash last year um when she came out and represented for Puerto Rico like I want Zelina to get her things and honestly I feel that she she deserves to be a front runner to win this year's money in the bank I know there's a collection of wrestling fans that have, have also been pushing for Chelsea Green to win it. And then, of course, with Money in the Bank being in Canada, that also feeds into it, too. But Zelina Vega has been putting the work in. She's been holding LWO on her back. You know, she's just been trying to improve and everything. So I really feel like Zelina Vega deserves an opportunity and she deserves to be Miss Money in the Bank at some point. Like, it just has to happen this year. It has to happen. And I was really low-key hoping she was going to get put in the Elimination Chamber this year. But sadly, that's not going to happen. Because Tiffany Stratton wound up winning the match. And that's good for her and her young career since she just got called up. It's cool. But something that I did hate for Tiffany Stratton is the fact that there aren't a lot of people reacting to her in a huge way in terms of the audience, because even in Birmingham, like there weren't that big react. There wasn't a big reaction for Tiffany when she fought um, Mia Yim. And I think it's because there aren't that many people who watch like Raw and SmackDown is watching NXT. So I really feel like if you already aren't watching NXT on Tuesdays, you definitely need to do so because with the way that they're integrating NXT people more on the main roster, you're going to get lost if you don't know who these people are. You're going to be lost. So please, for the love of God, if you are a wrestler fan, new or old, watch NXT and become fans of these people because once they get here on the main roster, they deserve to have more of a reaction than what was given to Tiffany Stratton this past Friday and in Birmingham as well. Like nobody was really that excited for her. And I'm just, and I'm pumped because I watch NXT, but I want more people to watch NXT so you can see more talented people like this. So, and y'all can just yell for these people. So please give Tiffany Stratton a reaction, her things, booze or whatever, but don't just sit there and just look at her. Like she's just a bump on the log, please. Cause she's like that talented. So do that. Now, another part of SmackDown that really elicited a big reaction out of me is the story of AJ Styles sort of isolating himself from the Good Brothers and Mia Yim. And they got into a fight backstage and Carl Anderson, like, mushed his face and then AJ, you know, and him got into a scuffle, but then they broke them up. And I'm really going to need for the Good Brothers and Mia Yim to understand that AJ is not for them anymore. He's for himself. So if he's going to be a redneck Batman, y'all need to let him be a redneck Batman by himself. Just let it go and just leave him alone. And if y'all going to keep the OC going with y'all selves and keep it going with y'all selves or just go your separate ways. But it's getting painful seeing y'all trying to smile up in AJ's face and he just keeps turning y'all away. Like it's really, it's getting really sad. And I hate it. I really hate it for y'all. But y'all really do need to just leave him alone at this point. He's chosen anger and isolation. So you got to make your decision for yourself, you know, and just leave him alone. So, yeah. Another part that I liked about SmackDown was the appearance of Jade Cargill again with this beautiful silver outfit that just made her look like a part of the Renaissance tour. And then you have Braun Breaker and they had these contracts that they were either supposed to sign or offer or look at or something like that to see what's being offered to them. And Jay did not look that impressed 
Whereas Braun Breaker kind of did look impressed and he wound up signing his contract. So now he is a part of the SmackDown roster as well as being one half of the NXT Tag Team Champions with Baron Corbin as the Wolf Dog. So congratulations to him for that. But Jay Cargill was up here looking like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to sign with y'all just yet. So... For all we know, she could pop up on Raw next week and then she might, you know, sign with them. And that would be interesting because SmackDown at this point is really stacked when you think about the women's division. You got Bianca, you got Shotzi, you got Naomi, you got Tiffany now, you got Zelina, you, oh my God, you have all the damage control. Like, it's just really crazy to to think about. So maybe Raw could stand to have a storm there. And maybe Jade will be better suited there. Or maybe even she might go to NXT and just throw us in for a loop. You just never know. But yeah, like these contract signings and watching these people make these appearances like this in sort of like a sports-like atmosphere, it's just really cool. And I've been really enjoying it. So yeah, big ups to these people. Big ups to Braun Breaker for signing with SmackDown. And I can't wait to see what Jade has to offer us next. Also, my dad bought Jade Cargill's t-shirt and he has not stopped wearing it. <laughs> he really has not stopped wearing it. Like he's been wearing it like a whole lot since he bought it. And I can't blame him. He loves Jade and I love her too. So I get it. Also, another thing I loved about SmackDown is Naomi has a new theme song, which sounds super similar to the theme song she had in TNA. And I love it. It's like she's spelling her name and she's rapping the words to her own song. And it's just really cool. So, of course, we do have to have a moment of silence for the amazing theme song that, you know, the bring it to the flow. I'm amazing. We got to RIP to that song because we had a great time with that song when we had it. And then she came back at the Royal Rumble with that song. But I can't tell you how much I miss her Trinity song too with Josiah Williams who did the theme song for this show. Like that theme song is amazing. Like Trinity and whoa, I love that song. And now it's gone. Well, it's not gone. You can still listen to it, but it's just the fact that she won't be using it on TV. And then she won't be using the other one on TV. Then we got this new one, but the new one is a vibe too. And I like it. And the fact that she was up here dancing to it on the apron and she hit a split and then close her legs back up with a slide. I was like, you better get it. Her athleticism has only gotten better since she's been gone. And I just love this star treatment that she has been getting. Like Naomi deserves this up and down and I love her so much. So big ups to her and everything. Eric saying, it doesn't matter what her name is. She will always and forever be our goddess of glow. Naomi slash Trinity forever. Absolutely. And I saw your um, comment about um, TNA here. So I just wanted to give that a little bit of a highlight as well. But ma'am, man, Naomi is just out here. And then she wound up winning her match against Alba Fire. So she is now in the Elimination Chamber match for the women too. And you just love to see it. She knew her worth. She proved her worth. And now they're treating her like she's worth something. That is what you live for. Okay? We love it. Now, of course, we have Dakota Kai sort of pleading her case to Bailey, saying, you know, for her to protect her, saying, please protect me, please protect me because they're after me because Damage Control cut a promo, you know, saying that they were going to go after Dakota Kai for choosing to be on Bailey's side instead of theirs. And so Dakota was like, I need you to protect me, Bailey. But then Bailey was like, I don't trust anybody at this point. And at this point, I don't even trust you either. Because if you really think about it, Dakota was saying that she didn't want it to be like this when it came to damage control. But when it came to them talking trash about Bailey, she heard and understood everything that they were saying and didn't necessarily stop them either. So how can you trust Dakota Kai? I am definitely on the side of Bailey here when it comes to that. And then sadly enough, Dakota is acting like she didn't pull one of the most iconic heel turns in history when she stabbed her best friend Tegan Knox in the back at NXT TakeOver War Games. We saw that happen. We ain't forgot. The North remembers how you stabbed your best friend in the back like that and attacked her just because Rhea didn't initially pick you for her team at War Games. We know that that happened. 
Or for those who didn't know that that happened, yeah, that happened years ago. So we do not trust you when it comes to your friends or who you say your friends are. So I don't blame Bailey for kind of looking at her with a side eye. I really don't. So yeah, that's going to be really interesting. But I just hope that Bailey and EO gets the spotlight that they deserve at WrestleMania, like I mentioned earlier in News and gossip So yeah, it's crazy, but this is where we're at. And finally, no pun intended, we have The Rock, Mr. Dwayne, popping up on SmackDown, coming out after the bloodline came out. And Roman said that they were officially installing him into the bloodline, even though I don't understand how you could officially install somebody who was already in the thing, but okay, whatever, here we are. And so he's joined the bloodline and he came out here in this vest that really feels like a nod to the shirts that he used to wear in the nineties and the attitude era when the rock persona became a thing. And it was just really interesting to see him out here dressed like this. And then he had on the sunglasses and stuff. And then his theme song was changed a bit with a key change and everything like it used to be. And now he's out here being Hollywood rock again. And it's just like, oh my God. So for those who don't know, because of course podcasts weren't a thing during this phase, his Hollywood rock persona got on my last nerves. I hated it. <laughs> I hated it so much. His Hollywood rock persona, I mean, it was so goofy when you look back at the stuff, but I hated it so much because I'm not a traditional heel girl. So when he went bad, I was just like, man, rock, why? Like, I hated it. So he proceeds to come out here and he does all of his catchphrases or whatnot, but he proceeds to lay on the thickest shade onto Salt Lake City I've ever heard in my life. He started roasting them, calling them inbred, calling them, you know, rednecks and hicks and all this other stuff and call them trailer park trash. I was like, oh my God, why? He was being so mean. And I was just like, oh my God, this is too much. But where he really missed me at was when he was talking about how stupid it was that Cody changed his mind. Um, because that's just not how it works. And I'm just sitting here like, no, that is how it works. Because when you win the Royal Rumble, you get to choose whatever champion you want to fight. And that's how that works. And it's really crazy how Hollywood Rock would say that, seeing as he was the first Black man to win the Royal Rumble. And I'm more than sure he had his opportunity to choose what champion he wanted to face at that time. So you saying that that's not how that works, That's exactly how that works. Don't gaslight us. We know the rules of how the Royal Rumble works. Stop it. So it was just really like heartbreaking to hear him say that. I was just like, bro, why are you saying all this knowing full well this is how the Royal Rumble works? Just because you are in the bloodline and just because you are on the board of directors does not mean you can tell Cody Rhodes what choice to make. Just because you are The Rock does not mean that his name is not Cody Rhodes. Ain't no big eyes and little U's up in here. Okay. That's not how this is going to work. So now he's officially joined the bloodline. He raised his finger up in the air, but didn't even do the point right. He was, he was doing this and everybody else in the bloodline was doing this. So take from that what you will. A lot of people think that that's a signal for something. Like he really isn't on the bloodline side. I honestly think that when it comes to WrestleMania time, he's going to wind up costing Roman Reigns his title. And that's going to cause an actual feud between the both of them that might end at WrestleMania next year. But I just don't think we're going to get Roman and Rock this year. We're just not. And I just feel like The Rock is going to get too much dip on his chip. And he's going to cost Roman the championship. That's just how I feel about it. But we just got to wait and see. Because like I said, this road to WrestleMania is pretty wild. And it is just February. So that's all I liked in wrestling this week. (laughs) It was a whole lot. But now we got to move to the call to action. So, of course, last weekend, I got to participate in Comic Con for the second year in a row. And I'm so happy I was able to do it this year. I couldn't do it last year because I had a lot of stuff going on, had a lot of stuff due, like in terms of articles and stuff. So I couldn't do it last year. I was overwhelmed. 
But I was happy to do it this year, and the table was a massive success. I talked to multiple wrestling fans and even some wrestlers at the table, and a lot of people came by and asked me great questions. So I was so happy to be there and so happy to, you know, get it get get it cracking with the Comic Con crowd. So if you came and visit the table, thank you so much, and I hope you, you continue to support the show and support the brand as a whole as I continue to grow in this space. And I just want to thank the people at Comic-Con for allowing me to have a fan table there. And yeah, I just hope to continue to be able to have the fan tables with the title in the middle. Like, it's just amazing just how the table has evolved from where it once was in the beginning. And big ups to Brandon, the belt guy guy, for giving me and curating the belt with me. And also thank you to Malcolm, who is such a great supporter of the show, taking this picture of me at the table. Like, thank you so much. And I was so happy to finally meet Rakarsha. I know it was so great to meet you too. I was so happy to meet her. Um, and yeah, I was just happy to meet everyone who I met at the table. So I don't know where the table is going to be next, but just know that wherever I pop up, you know, you'll see me and it's going to be great. So thank you to Comic-Con for letting me be there. Also know that you can follow me um, and the show, um, Steph and Cat Talk Wow, as we give a post show talking about Wow Women of Wrestling Superheroes. You can watch that on both of our YouTube channels at The Hardy Wrestling Podcast and In Cat We Trust every Wednesday, unless otherwise stated, at 7.30 Eastern and 6.30 um, Central as we talk about and recap the hottest all-women's wrestling show on television. Um, we couldn't do it this week because we had stuff going on, but we will have a double episode this Wednesday where we talk about last weekend's episode and this weekend's episode. Some crazy stuff has gone on and we're going to talk about it, so so please be on the lookout for that and continue to watch every episode on our YouTube channels. It's really great. And also check out our interviews for Steph and Cat Talk Wow with the Tonga Twins um, and Jesse Jones. So please be on the lookout for those. And also be on the lookout for newer interviews that we will be doing for Black History Month. Um in the next few weeks. And of course, for all you know, we might be doing something for Women's History Month too, because that's in March. So yeah, we are getting it cracking with our content. So please support. And of course, if you're looking for somebody to be a writer, commentator, or a panelist for your Comic-Con, know that you can book me, book your girl, um, at, uh, you can email me at hardywrestlingpodcast at gmail.com, or you can DM me at Queen Steph Hardy on Instagram and on Twitter slash X. Those are all the places where I have been featured. So if you do want me to work for your promotion, we can work out rates and I will give you the most electric and passionate calling of a match that you have ever heard and i can also give you passionate panel work and writing work as well so book your girl book your girl book your girl i already have a booking and i'm so excited for that but i'm definitely open to having more bookings this year so book your girl dm me email me all of the above also, read my articles on dailyddt.com slash Stephanie Hardy. You can find every article that I've written for Daily DDT so far. And I just want to send a thank you to Raphael for being a really great um, contributing editor for me um, on the website. And this is, of course, my most recent article that I wrote last month detailing the importance of Mercedes Monet and Trinity slash Naomi betting on themselves. And it was really an honor to write about them. So please read that article and enjoy it. And I'll also read my other articles too. And I hope to continue writing some more. Um, there's more work on the horizon. So please check that out as well. And of course, since people are watching Love and WWE with Bianca and Montez, you can also buy my special Beyonce's relationship t-shirt at foryourwear.com slash hardy wrestling podcast. You can celebrate black love by wearing that t-shirt. Um, it is available in all sizes in the color black. 
please purchase it. It is an amazing t-shirt that I am so happy that I had the idea to have before the reality show even came out. So um, please buy that t-shirt in all sizes. If you love Bianca and Montez as a couple, please purchase it. Like I said, it's available in all sizes. So please check it out as you're checking out the reality show because they are a precious couple, okay? And just be on the lookout for that. Watch every episode. It's really great. But buy my t-shirts as well. Please buy my t-shirts because they're great. And I hope you've also been enjoying my Black history posts that I've been making for Black History Month. Um, I've been posting all Black women on my um social media for the entire month of February. And of course, if there's any woman that I may have missed during Black History Month on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast, I will more than likely post them for Women's History Month as well. So please do not feel slighted if I did not post you in the least. It's not because I didn't want to post you. It's just because there are so many of us Black women in wrestling, which is such a blessing, that I can't post everybody within 29 days. And I will post you next month. So please, um, bear with me and charge it to the fact that there's only there's so much room but I've been really happy to do these posts every day and they're definitely been you know making people happy so I really love and enjoy that and some of the wrestlers have been enjoying them too like Red Velvet and Willow um, and so many others so I'm really grateful for these posts and I'm glad that you guys are enjoying them and loving them so yeah Black Herstory Month is in full effect here at the Hardy Wrestling Podcast and of course, you can also buy my Alabama wrestling t-shirts and hoodies available in red and black in all sizes at foyerwear.com slash Hardy Wrestling Podcast. So you can represent um, the beauty of Alabama wrestling and what we've contributed to the wrestling culture with icons such as Sensational Sherry, Teddy Long, Paul Bearer, um, Kayla Braxton, Deborah. AQA and Fuego del Sol. So please purchase that t-shirt or those hoodies in all sizes. Good night, Isaac. Thank you so much for watching. So of course, this has been the Hardy Wrestling Podcast with your girl, Stephanie Hardy. Thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, please be encouraged no matter what's going on. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff happening in wrestling and it's easy to get overwhelmed with so many things and so many rumors and bad news but at the same time just hold on to what you love about wrestling hold on to that and just don't give up and if you do need to take a break in between things take a break please please take a break do not feel that you have to keep up with every 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 single news story while also watching tv as well but don't let anything take your love away that's just the truth just don't let anything take your love away and on that note, of course, this has been the Hardy Wrestling Podcast with your girl, Stephanie Hardy. And until next time, bye, y'all.